So for today, I'm utterly thrilled that Felix Bloom is with us. Um, Felix is a sound artist, sound engineer. Um, he currently works and lives between Mexico, Brazil and France. He uses sound as a basic material in sound pieces, videos, actions and installations. His work is focused on listening. It invites us to a different perception of our surroundings and his process is often collaborative, working with communities, using public space as the context within which he explores and presents his works. He's interested in myths and their contemporary interpretation in human dialogues, both with inhabited natural and urban contexts in what voices can tell beyond words, which is a very enticing and lovely set of sentences, I think. Um, Felix has exhibited around the world. I won't list them uh, for now. And I'll actually just hand over to Felix and say, thank you again, Felix. And the floor is yours as it were. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation and thank you very much for this introduction. So today I will go through a few projects that I've done. And um, of course, as I said, there is like a, a time for Q&A at the end. So uh, if you have any question, any, anything you want me to talk a bit more, uh, feel free to, to ask at the, at the end. Or even if you want me to talk to another, uh, pro from, to another project or from another thing that I uh, wouldn't have talked about, uh, feel free to, to ask, uh, I guess, uh, at the end too. So I will uh, start sharing the sound and the video sorry and uh, so i will start with a small general presentation of uh, my work and my career so um, i'm uh, well i have a formation of sound engineer uh, for film uh, i was studying uh, i'm from france i was studying in france and then in belgium in brussels and as a sound recorder for films, I was, uh, of course, recording what we called direct sounds, the sound uh, with the camera. But then uh, all the other sounds, which are like ambience and wild tracks and sounds that uh, I was uh, able to record for the project itself. But then, of course, that's uh, this huge amount of sound that I can use for my own sound library and that I first uh, start uh, to share uh, to share on a platform called FreeSound that you maybe used or maybe know about it. And if I start um, the, present, my, the presentation of my work with uh, this uh, sharing platform or with this FreeSound platform, it's because um, in a way it was important for me to, to share the sound and to discover while sharing that I wasn't the only one recording sounds. Uh, I wasn't the only one uh, using sounds or enjoying listening to sounds. And uh, that's something that I kind of discovered through, uh, through this platform and through the web uh, and just possibility to share things uh, with other people from very far away. And at the same time, this, uh, the fact to be, um, to be working as a sound engineer or sound recorder for films or from the, for documentaries uh, gave me the opportunity to load, to go to a lot of places and to go to places that I wouldn't uh, have been uh, if I wouldn't have been there for work or for, for the project itself. Uh, I come from a very small village in South of France. I, I wasn't really traveling uh, before I start working. And um, this act of sharing was, yeah, it's kind of the starting point. As for one of those songs that I've been um, recording, uh, I had the feeling when I listened to the song that it wasn't uh, maybe, it wasn't enough to share the song. It wasn't enough like to just to share a beautiful sounds, but uh, that maybe I, I should uh, try to share the sonic experience of the place of my my trip there or my, my time I had there. Um, in South uh, Argentina, in Patagonia, in Land of Fire. And so I will just uh, play you a few seconds uh, or a minute from, from this specific sound recorded in 2007.
Okay, so this was a small excerpt of this sound. And actually in this specific sound, we can already uh, listen to, um, to, the, to the place. Uh, where this is like huge trees in a huge forest. Uh, and we can listen to the, to the farmers who are trying to get together all the sheep. Uh, it's, we're talking about 14,000 hectares uh, in South uh, Argentina. And it's around 4,000 uh, sheep which are trying to get together once a year, uh, so they can uh, take off the wall, the wall from the from the sheep. So to to try to get them together, like they are screaming, they are uh, doing those sounds. And as I can't see each other, they, uh, each each one of the farmer has a specific sound is doing. So you know where the one is uh, or, or where are the others. And you can try to make like a line, like an invisible line in, into the to the the forest. So um, I was interested in this sound. Uh, I guess I mean later I can, I can uh, try to to know or to 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 understand why. And I think I was interested interesting because the first day is a narration, there is like a beginning and an end. There is something we can feel about the space. And there is this uh, relation between human and non-human. This is a relation between the, the people screaming there is, and, and the sheep. And uh, as Mark was saying in the bi biography, this idea that uh, interested in the voice, uh, but not necessarily in the world. Uh, so it means uh, we can listen to these people. We can try to understand what they are saying or what they are doing, but we don't need to understand the world. And in this case, actually, there is no word, uh, not real word at all. So when I done this first um, recording and when I tried to share it uh, a few years later, I just say, well, this could maybe, this needs something else. This needs to be um, maybe um, adapted, created, edited, mixed. So I can be more close to this sonic experience I had in this place. And that's all I done my small, my first like uh, sound piece, my first, uh, they call it sound card in, in France. Uh, on this uh, French radio, uh, Arte Radio, where I've been sharing it. But basically, it was the idea just to, yeah, to, to use the sound that I had from this place uh, and to share it in a small sound piece that was mostly shared on internet and on, uh, on radio. And based on this idea, I've done some more other pieces recorded. Uh, this one was with sound recorded in Mali for a shooting I have been working uh, a few years uh, before in 2005. And, uh, and like eight years later, I tried to adapt and to do something with the sound to make another small uh, short piece. This one is seven minutes. The first, the previous one was four minutes. And um, uh, the same thing with some sounds from Venezuela, from South of Venezuela, that I've been uh, doing a, a sound piece uh, about those recordings that I had. Of course, all those recordings were places that I didn't really choose. I just chose to, to, to do the project, but it was an invitation to work or it was a proposal to work as a sound engineer and not really a choice, uh, let's say. So in 2014, I tried to, to say, well, maybe I could uh, try to record sound, not only, uh, I mean, try to record sound thinking in a specific project. And at this time, I was um, mostly in Mexico City. So uh, during a few months, even a few years, I decided to, um, well, to, to record the sound from the city and to try to get this um, sonic identity of uh, a city as Mexico City. So this become a piece called Los Gritos de Mexico, which means the cries or the screams of, of, uh, of Mexico City. Um, and I will just maybe play uh, the two first minutes uh, of it uh, and before I talk about it.
Una bolsa de moda de novedad, el pase de güerita. Venga a ver, aproveche, mire, venga a ver, aproveche. Ahí están los chiles, dame, caballeros, niños, niños, cinco palos, cinco palos, cinco palos, cinco de cinco pesos, cinco pesos, señora, aprovecho, el cinco pesos, cinco palos. Regalo, remate, güera. Se va de regalo, se va de remate, güera. Aproveche, regalo, remate, güera. Venga a ver, aproveche, cinco pesos. Regalo, regalo, se va de remate, mira. Veinte varas, veinte pesos, mira. Aproveche, regalo, remate, güera. Refrescos de lata, doce, tres por doce. Quince pesos. Cien varas, se va de cien varas. Aquí se va a ver, aproveche, checa, checa, güera. So this was a small uh, excerpt of this uh, piece called uh, Los Gritos de Mexico. Um, so that that's actually the beginning, the introduction of the of the short version. There is two versions. There's a, a long version, which is almost half an hour, and the other one, the short one, is like 17 minutes long. And so my starting point about this uh, piece was to record the people screaming uh, in the street uh, of Mexico City and thinking that maybe it wasn't only uh, street sellers, only screams, but it was maybe people uh, singing or it was maybe a polyphonic core from the, um, from the city of uh, Mexico. So uh, of course I've been uh, not only recording people screaming, uh, But there, there was a few different moments where uh, people were screaming for, dif for different reasons. And then, of course, uh, different sounds that I found uh, interesting in the city of Mexico City. In this small uh, first part that we've been listening to, um, I was, we've been listening to the street sailors, uh, which are in the center of Mexico City, in, a, in the streets. And actually, that's a place where it's not so easy to, I mean, it's illegal street selling. So they are not so um, happy about people uh, doing any kind of recording. And uh, they make it understand kind of clear that it wasn't a good idea to be in the street recording with the microphone. But then I understand that the people themselves didn't add a real problem. So I just start spending time with them. Uh, in, in a small place where they are leaving their stuff during the night or where they are um, uh, getting a, a Coke or eating something uh, at lunch. And I start talking with them and saying, well, I would like to record the sounds of the cellular, but I am not able to record in the street. So I tried to convince them. It takes me like a week. I was with a Mexican friend to go every day. And at the end of the week, I had maybe 15 uh, different uh, recordings. Uh, of them and that's why I've been able to record and to, to record them but then to play with with the songs and with the, the, the screams of them and that's all I've been able to do this editing and to make it sounds like a core in a way or like a polyphony uh, sometimes so of course I, I spent some time there and then I've been able to to give them uh, a CD it was a few years ago that we still using CD and so of them themselves uh, screaming and uh, producing the sound. So then I've been uh, recording in demonstration, as we can see, different kind of demonstration uh, in, a, in a city like Mexico, they like to, to make a uh, demonstration. I, I guess I have uh, some reason to fight. Um, so uh, then people uh, yeah, screaming uh, for different uh, events too, uh, like a soccer event. Uh, And then, uh, yeah, just uh, getting together on Sunday and doing like uh, uh, gathering together. Uh, so this was one of my, I mean, this was my first, the first sound piece that I've done. Uh, uh, thinking of the sound piece at the beginning, not recording the sound and then say, well, let's do what I can see, I can do with the sound. And this piece, uh, Los Gritos de Mexico, uh, I mean, of course, uh, all the material I will show today is available on internet, so you can uh, listen to it uh, uh, again, or to listen to the whole piece, uh, or to even download or do everything you want with it. Um, and uh, this piece was kind of starting point of the work, not only with sound, but then with installation and with uh, 
uh, more collaborative works too uh, because uh, they invite me not only to show the piece uh, on radio or on internet but then to show it in some exhibition space so it was like kind of a, a game changer from from my work uh, in general in parallel with um, with this uh, work of um, doing sound editing on sound scapes or some some work with uh, some recordings uh, actually the same year that i've done this first sound card uh, uh, i was on a shooting uh, recording sounds in north of chile in the desert of atacama and uh, with the cameraman we decided to make this small clip So it was like uh, the first uh, video of a series that it's now uh, almost uh, 35 uh, different small videos. And um, with this small video, uh, which is can, can look a bit funny maybe, uh, there was the base of, of the whole series, which was like, you have a difference uh, between the point of view and the point of listening, because you are, list you are, you, you are watching to the guy recording the sound. So you can easily understand that what you are listening to is not the point of view of the camera, but the point of listening of the microphone or of the guy doing the sound recording. And so it makes like a kind of a switch that you're not so used to, to have in audiovisual. Generally, we try to make um, you know, the spectator, uh, the audience think that the point of view and the point of listening are the same, are, are the same or are the same uh, place. And, um, when you start to uh, separate them, as it's the case of the series, then you suddenly you're more listening maybe than watching. Or the idea is like to use the video uh, uh, to help uh, the people to listen and not to do the contrary, which is uh, generally the case. Uh, so the proposal was just yeah to have one fixed um, image and in which you can uh, see the sound recorder and the microphone. And uh, then you can listen to, to the sound uh, that is recorded by the microphone. So, um, and then this, this, uh, this series uh, came in this part, uh, in, the, in this, maybe this switch between uh, my sound engineer career, where I was mostly working as a sound engineer, because I mean, the main character of this video series is like a sound recorder. Uh, and then slowly become like more to what we could call sound, sound art or sound installation or, or video, video art uh, using sound uh, in a more creative way maybe. So this second video, uh, so I will not show the 35 uh, video because it could take like, uh, even if they are very short, it will take uh, a long time. Uh, I will just pick up a few and um, which are uh, during this, the, the, the years that I've done uh, those, uh, those uh, small videos. Now? Yeah. Again? So this one was done in uh, Oklahoma, so we have the same um, ID of a fix and um, recording this this young guy uh, doing this uh, in front of the shop. Um, this one, the next one is done in the mountain. We are around 5,000 uh, meter high and it's um, in a mine uh, in Bolivia. The next one is uh, in Istanbul, in Turkey.
in this one I was using a hydrophone. Uh, it was uh, for, for those who know about it, it was like an Aquarian H2A and recording just the sound of a, of a place where some fishermen were in Istanbul, in Turkey. And the same microphone I've been using for the next uh, video. And of course, as always, I've been playing with this uh, is that sometimes you can listen to the sound before you see what uh, is the sound, which is the case of the next video. So you have a few seconds of just uh, expecting or uh, thinking about what kind of sound could produce, what kind of uh, thing could produce the sound we're listening to. In this case, it was a small turtle in the Amazonian rainforest with a contact microphone on top of her. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about this place, specific place where I've been recording the turtle uh, later for another project. Uh, the next one is uh, in Turkey too, in Anatoly. Next one in the mountains of uh, Ecuador. <laughs> To other mountains, this one are uh, the beginning of a series of ten videos I have done for for the festivals. So in this case, uh, I wasn't uh, anymore uh, working as a sound engineer on a project, but I was proposing myself this series of video uh, for uh, festivals in Switzerland uh, called uh, Beloir. And so I've been producing for them uh, ten small videos, and this one is one of those uh, smalls. This one too for the same festival. And uh, another one from the same festivals. Uh, so as you say, I mean, on the, in the last video I've done, of course, it was maybe more conscient about the, the video itself. And there was some uh, maybe yeah, thinking about the place, the situation that I could record. And uh, as it was for a festival, then I, we, we were able just to, to, to scout the, the good place to make even different takes. 
uh, because of course at the beginning when I was working as a sound engineer and just doing this small recording, it was like a one shot thing and just uh, having the idea and let's say, okay, let's do it and let's try. And that was uh, it. And basically for this festival, then I start yeah, just thinking about the different possibilities and uh, playing a bit more maybe with the possibility of this uh, uh, series of video, which is called actually, I didn't, I think I didn't say the, the name of the series, which is called Son Seul Wild Track. And Son Seul means uh, wild track in, in, in English. And that's the term we're using when you redo a scene only for sound uh, in uh, when you are on a shooting, basically. When if you maybe you redo a, a sound done by the actors, or even if it's for documentary, you redo a, a thing only for sound and you don't film it anymore. Uh, that's something you call son seul and you call wide track in English generally. So that, that's the beginning, the, the starting point of the series and that's the name of the series. I will show another one from, from this series done for Switzerland. So this was the last one of the this uh, small series. I mean, it's the last one from the one I will show today with this broken boom uh, after a truck passed by uh, in, in Switzerland. So uh, now I will talk about uh, one of the uh, installative projects that I've done. It was in 2018. Um, from 2018 to 2019. It was a project for the Thailand Biennale. Uh, and when they contact me a few months uh, before the Biennale or, or almost a year, they uh, told me to think about a site-specific work that would be uh, in a natural place. So of course I was uh, at this point mostly working with sound recording and like this uh, field recording. Uh, things and I was um, wondering how I could do like a sound installation in a place without uh, having the possibility to to play sounds uh, or because there was there were no no energy or maybe I mean at some at, at the beginning I start thinking about ways to get energy there to make like um, uh, solar energy or wind energy or try to get uh, some electricity to the spot. But then at some point I say, well, if the invitation is to do or sing something um, in a natural space, maybe I have just to switch the switch uh, how I'm, I'm thinking and try to um, to do it another way. And uh, that's all I, I, of course, I, I just, at this point, I wasn't uh, familiar with uh, Thailand at all. I was never, I had never been there. And uh, even to Asia in general, that's not the place where I had been. Before, so uh, what I try to do is just to look on internet and different uh, ways to get some information about what is uh, happening in Thailand and what could uh, be like a starting point of inspiration for, to make a proposal for the Biennale. And I came through those um, bamboos barrier, uh, which are used in different places of uh, Thailand. They're um, mostly used to break the waves uh, because of course they have some problem of uh, rising of the sea level as we have uh, everywhere in the world and they have some problem of coastal erosion which provokes like the village have to move uh, from one place to another one after a few years just because the well the, the sea is getting uh, is getting part of the beach and uh, the houses and the villages are getting inside the, the sea so when I saw this, I was very interested. Uh, I mean, I find it interesting. Uh, first, I, I find it interesting like visually. And then uh, about this idea that you're fighting against such a huge problem as uh, climate change, basically, uh, with such a common thing as a bamboo, uh, uh, sticking a bamboo in, 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 the, in the sea. 
And uh, of course, if they do it, 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 it's because it works. So I was uh, impressed by this, like just fighting such a problem with such a small and simple way. And um, I start to think about a way to make this, those already exist, existing uh, ways of uh, break the waves uh, to make, uh, to turn it maybe a sound installation or an, or an invitation to listen to, to, to those uh, sound, to those uh, bamboos, to listen to the sea, uh, to listen to the nature. Uh, so I, I was in Mexico City and I just go, went to the uh, Uncraft market a few blocks from my house and I get a bamboo and then I get a bamboo flute. And I've done like a very small uh, first test uh, in my room in Mexico. It was very first test, but uh, I sent this small video uh, to explain that what I wanted to do. And basically, uh, when I've been moving like the bamboo inside the water bucket, uh, the idea was to uh, reproduce the, the waves which are moving and pushing the air inside the bamboo. And basically, the idea was very uh, easy. It's like the waves are always moving, and so. Uh, doing like a hole uh, in the bottom of the bamboos, it will uh, make the water inside moving, and then this moving of this moving water will push the air until the uh, the top of the bamboos. Of course, I will take all the inner separation of the bamboo out, and on top of the bamboo, I will put uh, a flute, uh, another bamboo flute, smaller, upside down, and when the air is pushed until the the flutes, the flutes will sound. Um, and then, of course, uh, I will, depending on the flutes I will put, it will have different sound. So basically, that was uh, the idea I had before I went to Thailand. So the, the idea I sent to the to the creator, and uh, he said, "Okay, I'll come over and let's have a look and do a first scouting trip." So once I, I was there, uh, I've seen one of the some some of the bamboos barriers that are there at this specific area where I would. Uh, what was a Thailand dinner would uh, happens, and I met um, one of the guy working with uh, woods in in town, in or in this small big, uh, big village or small town called Krabi. And uh, I went there. I explained more or less the idea, and uh, we tried to uh, well to do a few tests of bamboos, cutting the bamboos, putting some flutes, different kind of flutes. Of course, uh, it's a place where it was mostly during like doors and windows and furniture. Uh, so it wasn't an extra in bamboo flute or not even in bamboos. But we've been able to, to, to make a few prototypes. And with those prototypes, we'll, I, I went to the beach at some point and tried to, to install them inside the beach to see how the waves would react or would uh, work with uh, the installation. So the first prototype type was done like uh, oh, one of those beach schools in the place. So this was only with five flutes, so it wasn't um, Maybe it's so, so representative of the of the wall installation that would happen later. Uh, but at this point, I was uh, able to to convince them to to try to do the project to make it with 150 different bamboo flutes, with bigger uh, and longer uh, bamboos, which would be around six meter high. And at this point, I meet a, a guy working mostly with uh, bamboos. Uh, I've done the same thing, getting there with my bucket of water and the bamboo flute and trying to explain the project I had. And uh, this guy was mostly doing like uh, huts and or buildings with bamboos or different kind of things only with bamboos. And he was kind of interested of uh, working with uh, me on the project. And uh, we've been thinking all together how to, to do this. 
Uh, of course, there is a big tide there, so it can be more more than two and a half meter tide between the high tide and low tide. So uh, we decided to make uh, like a kind of a bamboo bridge, so the people would be able to go uh, there and to uh, kind of listen to the to the bamboo flute orchestra once they are uh, on the platform. Uh, this first proposal has been rejected by the park because it, I mean these beaches are part of the park. But they proposed me a place where there was already like a floating pier. It was a plastic floating pier, and the idea was to uh, build uh, in a in a diameter of uh, fifty or sixty meter around the floating pier to build this um, bamboo flutes um, orchestra. So uh, a few months uh, later, I come back. I came back there and decided to spend a few uh, weeks to build it. Uh, of course, not only on my own, but with the guy I met and uh, a wall, uh, a wall team, which is called Bambugu, um, and which is uh, are uh, do doing this kind of uh, installation with uh, bamboos. So um, we spent some time there. At some idea. Uh, I think at the beginning it wasn't very clear what they were doing, uh, what was the like the 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 main idea or what was the main goal of the sound installation uh, so we we start as beginning to make like a small uh, network of uh, or like a red of um uh, of bamboo uh, no pine pine woods which would be like the kind of a basement for the installation and then to attach to those uh, pine woods all the bamboo flutes uh, the bamboos uh, to it so once we start putting the first uh, bamboo flutes, uh, then it starts sounding. And uh, even if it was only one uh, single sound, I think then they start to understand what we were doing. And then, uh, of course, I was with them working and trying to help them in, in, a, in a way uh, without understanding uh, uh, Thai, and they don't speak uh, English nor French. So it was kind of, um, yeah, being there uh, with them, trying to do the same thing they were doing and trying to build it uh, all together um, without uh, without uh, having the possibility to talk. But once we put once and uh, it was like putting more and more and then slowly building this orchestra or uh, slowly, I like the idea that uh, there maybe the, the whole team were kind of a composer of this, or, uh, of the partition of the score uh, from from this bamboo orchestra. Uh, uh, on the on the same time, I was uh, kind of tuning those uh, flutes. So I get I we we get some um, smaller bamboo flutes which were without any all. So what I'm trying to do is to uh, tune them one by one on a pentatonic scale. So just to have something that would sound more or less. Um, uh, all together and uh, of course uh, it was only an attempt I mean it was super perfect but so I was um, tuning a few of the of the bamboos and I put them on top of the of it uh, we tried to find of course and nothing was really clear uh, everything was uh, while doing it we were able to understand how it was working how it wasn't uh, what would or not uh, produce a good sound what would or not resist uh, to the waves uh, so we were all like uh, looking for different um, ways of doing it the best we can and uh, until we arrived to the end of the process it was kind of very uh, nice for me and for them too just to be able to slowly listen to the whole sounds produced by the the bamboos flutes uh, and those huge bamboos uh, Inside the inside the the water, um, so uh, this those are all the people who have been uh, working with me on the on this uh, sound installation, which uh, became Rumors from the Sea. That is the name of the of the installation. There were all local uh, workers for the project uh, for this uh, bamboo team. Uh, but then, of course, it was uh, important for me not only to come with a crazy idea and to do it all together, but just to try to involve uh, the people from the village and people uh, from from the place itself. So I decided to go to the school um, 
and uh, there I had a translator, uh, and so it was uh, important for me to share the project uh, before it was done. So before uh, the sound installation was done, I went to them. I I showed them once again the the water bucket and uh, my small uh, experiment. I showed them the small video that we've done uh, that I've done uh, just before. And um, I, I show them the flutes too, and I uh, ask to them to uh, try to imagine what kind of um, sound would uh, provoke this, or what kind of um, things or spirit or creature could come from the sea to help the humans to fight this um, climate change or to fight this uh, coastal erosion. So uh, we listen to the sound and I try to start uh, writing on some post it uh, some idea about what kind of sound, uh, what kind of thing could provoke this. And uh, then once we have done a lot of different proposals, they start drawing uh, to those uh, uh, things that could provoke the sound uh, that we had uh, listened to or that we, we would imagine. Um, so each one has done, of course, his own interpretation of the of the reason of the sounds that we are listening to, and uh, they've been uh, showing their uh, proposal uh, of different uh, drawing. Uh, then I proposed to them to make the tuning of a few of the flutes. Uh, so each children I done the tuning of two different flutes. Uh, one flute that he kept. Uh, they keep for himself or for herself, and another one which is uh, part of the installation. We became part of the installation uh, in the sea, and with all those uh, small uh, flutes and the small, uh, the smaller uh, uh, bamboo flutes, we've done like a small uh, short film uh, on the last day of the workshop at the school, where uh, the idea of the short film was kind of very. Um, simple it was the idea that they would listen to the to the sea and they would uh, the children would like kind of call the the help from this creature from this spirit coming from the sea and they would call with the flutes and then the the sea itself would like kind of answer uh, give uh, another call um coming from the sea so that's uh, i will just show a bit the small uh, short film
So this was a short film we've done with the children, and then that's a few images from the sound installation itself, which uh, has been shown uh, during four four months uh, during Stalin Biennale. And I like it to, to to see like a huge four months concert uh, where people could uh, listen. I mean, could become the audience of the installation. So of course the sound was very different uh, depending on the waves. Uh, mostly the, I mean the tide too, but mostly the eye of the waves. Sometimes it was a very very small wave, and so you could almost uh, listen to a very tiny sound. And even people coming there were not able to to make the relation between the sound they were listening to and the flutes or the bamboos all around them. And some in some cases you had like a huge. Uh, waves which um, will make it uh, like uh, screaming uh, or maybe singing depending on on the point of uh, listening or the point of view uh, from the people so uh, i i was uh, able to spend a lot a lot of time and a, a few nights uh, just listening to the bamboos orchestra and then uh, it was nice to see the people and the children from the village coming to to the place and to show it to other people and uh, or to even to so, to see some fishermen uh, which were uh, a, uh, using this platform to fish and just to listen to the sound or to put some comments uh, on their Facebook village page that they were listening to strange sounds during the night or something like this. So it was uh, nice to, to see a bit of interaction with the people. And um, uh, so in this uh, installation, I wasn't uh, actually using what I was from or what I had studied, which was like sound recording. But I was maybe mostly focusing about the listening. And I guess at some point, uh, what I uh, I think I maybe my work is more, more connected or more focusing about this idea of listening than the idea of uh, field recording or sound recording. And of course, this idea of listening can go through uh, recording in most of the cases. But in some, it doesn't, uh, as uh, this case of uh, rumors from the sea. And so I is to listen to the sound installation, of course, but then uh, maybe in a, in, a, in a more general way, the idea to listen to all, uh, to everything which is all around the, the platform, uh, the bamboos, but the waves, and to think like maybe the sound we're listening to is not the sound from the bamboos, but the sound from the waves or the sound from the sea. Uh, or oh, that's uh, yeah, maybe something more global uh, about the sound uh, produced by this uh, remorse from the sea. And the idea that you're listening, when you're listening, trying to, to listen to this sound installation, you're trying to listen to the uh, environmental the soundscape all around uh, them and maybe to, to, to be aware about, uh, about it. 
Uh, so this was uh, a project I wanted to share uh, with you and to share a bit about the process. I will uh, now make um, uh, another uh, talk about another project uh, very far away from Thailand, which is uh, it's the Amazonian rainforest, a kind of very different uh, project too, but maybe connected to this idea of um, listening. That's a place where I've been um, uh, a few years ago, I was uh, basically doing a project in Chile and I had uh, like a few weeks of break in between. And I decided to use this kind of break to go to a place to make some sound recording. And then of course, to do some sound recording, uh, I had to find or to define a place where I could go to make uh, recordings. And um, I decided to go to the Amazonian rainforest. Uh, probably it's a bit uh, uh, naive as a sound recorder to say, well, let's go to the sound paradise and just record sound from the forest. But of course, the Amazon rainforest is super big. So um, I decided to pick up a place a bit far away from the big cities. So I went to a place more or less 500 or 600 west from Manaus which is one of the biggest city from the Amazonian rainforest. And um, once I arrived there, I was in a small city called Tefe, uh, and they decided to, to be there and to ask to people if there would be an option to go in a village or somewhere a bit um, apart from this uh, small city to be in more in a natural place and to be able to make some sound recording. I was basically on, on not doing a project. I was just on holidays uh, on, a, on a field recording trip or doing some recording in the in the forest. And at this point, at this, I, I met a few people and I met uh, some people, well, a, a young guy which was in contact with a, a village who wanted to receive some tourists. Uh, so. I say, well, uh, let's go. And so I was the first tourist to 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 go to this small village. At this point, I had no information at all about the village itself, about what they were doing, what they were eating, how many people. I mean, I had nothing about. I knew nothing about the place. They just came with a small boat to get me uh, on it, and one and a half hour later, I arrived to the to the village. Uh, as uh, yeah, the first uh, tourist, the first uh, foreigner to, to arrive to the village. So it's a small village uh, called Tawari um, with Y at the end. Uh, it's uh, that's a uh, picture sent me later of about the village. Uh, so the the orange thing is um, the school, but also all the uh, small houses are done of wood. And so I arrived there and um, I arrived with my microphone, which was like the pretext or the excuse to be there and to say, well, I'm here to record sounds. Uh, what kind of sound could I record uh, in your village? So of course I was, as I was the first to it, they really want me to, to, to be happy about, uh, about the experience. Uh, so I could get more tourists to the village probably. And at the same point, they were very curious about me to see what uh, tourists want or what, uh, the tourists is looking for and what uh, can we do so uh, to develop tourism in the in the village and um, so uh, they came with me and we basically spent a lot of time uh, in different points of the of the forest trying to record some sounds and of course when i'm asking uh, to the people what kind of sound could i record then of course in a way they said they, they told to me the sounds that um, are important for them. Uh, so it was a way, in a way this idea that they, could, they would say me, yeah, well, we could record this kind of bird, we can go to this kind of place, we could try to record the sound of this uh, specific monkey or the specific uh, uh, place, the specific animal. So we spent a lot of time in the forest and um, as I were curious about it, sometimes I would have like one person just coming with me, sometimes it would be another people from the village, sometimes it would be like even two or three people uh, going with me and spending some time uh, taking care of me in a way, but at the same time being uh, observing me uh, in the way I was uh, listening and uh, looking for the sounds. Um, so of course they need, uh, well, we all need a lot of patience to, to record sounds. So it was basically sitting in a place 
and listening and waiting for sounds to happen or just walking and try to listen to the sounds from uh, all around the earth. And uh, I had, of course, uh, an extra headphone. So I was able to not only just to, rec to listen by myself, but to give them an headphone so we could experience this amplified listening uh, through the microphone and the recorder. Um, at some point, we went to a place on the, on the river to record the sound of the dolphins. And, and then uh, we spent a long time, and then we sp they spent a long time listening to this sound, which was there. It was inside the, the river, uh, but it was uh, something they, would, they were not uh, aware about it. I mean, they were not able to listen to this sound because uh, if you want to listen to a dolphin underwater, you have or you put your water in, you, you add your whole head inside the water, or you put an hydrophone. And so with an hydrophone, it was of course much easier and we've been able to spend a long time. And uh, they were just fascinated about listening to this sound, which were just underneath in the water, but that we would have not, uh, they were not uh, able to listen before. But then of course, even in different places, it was always very nice to just listen to the sound and spend some time and just, uh, yeah, just being there, uh, enjoying the, the listening experience. After around 10 days, I start not only to record the sound from the, from the forest, but I started recording the sound from, from the people living there, which was like just recording the sound of the, um, of the villages of people talking, playing soccer, uh, um, preparing uh, cooking or things like this. But then at some point I start to do something that I didn't, uh, I had not done before, which was doing kind of interviews or makes, making small talks with them. And then I start uh, recording uh, those uh, small conversation um, with different people. And uh, the first one, uh, I ask him, of course, the, the story of the village, the story of himself. Um, so it was a very small village, like 20 families. Um, so it was, uh, after, I mean, after a few weeks, uh, they were already like more, uh, uh, they were more confident and they were more uh, uh, trusting me. And so they start uh, telling me the story and they start telling me uh, the sound from the village, the sound from the animals. And they talk about a specific uh, animal or creature called Kurupira. Um, and this specific animal called Kurupira, it was something in between the human and the animal. It was, uh, I mean, they, they tried to describe it and um, they tried to describe the sound uh, this animal was producing. Um, and uh, because most of them has listened to it, to, to the creature, they had listened to the sound. And then I tried to look in my sounds, maybe I had recorded it and then maybe we tried to find the sound and to be able to record the sound. So I, um, and the only people, uh, the only guy who has been able to see the Kurupira never come back, never came back from the, from the forest. We don't know if he decided to stay with the Kurupira in the forest or if the Kurupira take him into the forest, uh, charm him and make him uh, live there in the forest. So um, I was very interested between uh, with this idea, of course, of the Kurupira, of this creature. Uh, I had no internet and no uh, option to ask to the to the Google if the Kurupira was uh, something uh, which was only from this village, it was existing or not. Uh, so I had to ask to more people about the story of Kurupira. And so I start uh, talking with other people. Uh, I've done like around 15 different interview and conversation of the people just telling me about the uh, same thing, the story of the village, the story of the Kurupira, uh, the story of themselves. And everybody was say, 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 saying the same idea of, the, of Antonio, we who went with the Kurupira and never came back and other small stories uh, happening there. Um, so I was kind of interesting, but at this point I was only collecting, I mean, I went there only on holiday to collect some sounds. So I went there to collect the sounds and I start doing those interview and to uh, recall the sounds uh, of them just uh, talking and saying this, those uh, stories. And um, I, I had nothing in mind at this point. I wasn't there like for a specific project or doing a, a specific uh, project now. Um, but then at some point I was uh, keeping doing the, 
the interview, uh, I was going to the forest too, and I started doing uh, a few portraits of them. Uh, I started to do this video portrait of them while listening with me, while just with the headphones. So the setup was, there was uh, close to me, I was with the headphones, they had the headphones, they were listening through the microphone, uh, the same thing as me, and they were uh, listening to the sounds all around them, uh, so they would uh, be able just to listen to the song in an amplified uh, way. So I've I've done a few of those portraits in, in the last days I was there. The first one was the one uh, listening to the dolphins, was I were really um, uh, captivated by the by the, the what was they were listening to, and um, yeah, basically doing this uh, video materials of them uh, listening. Uh, well, after uh, a few months, uh, so I leave the place, I had all this material, after a few months, I try to have a look, have a listen to all this material, to those video material of them listening, to the uh, recording in the forest, to the interviews and people uh, talking. And I try, and I start uh, editing uh, on Pro Tools, on a, a audio software, and uh, I did first the sounds, and then I put some, some of the interviews, and then as it was in Portuguese, I had to put some subtitles. Um, but then, of course, when they were not talking, it was only black screen. And so I just fill the black screens with those video portraits of them uh, listening and start working on it. And then I send it to a few friends, and they say, well, this is not a sound piece, this is a film, or this is uh, yeah, becoming more video piece than a sound piece. And I say, well, let's, let's, let's see, uh, and keep working on it. And then it becomes this um, kind of hybrid uh, project, which became much more a film than, than a sound piece, I don't know. Um, of course, it was a long process because I was, the kind of project I've done on my own. So it takes, I'm basically more doing almost everything. So it takes a long time. And I will just show you the, the trailer of this uh, Kurupila uh, creature of the wood. É o assovio fino, esse longo, bem fino. Mas se você ouvir aquele som dela, parece que assim a mente da gente se apaga. Ela encandia a gente, assim, penultiza. Diz que ela, ela faz a gente se perder no mato, né? É invisível, só aparece, dizem que só aparece quando quer. Mas a gente sente aquele animal. A gente sente. Eu já senti. as pessoas que contam. Eu nunca ouvi isso, porque se eu tivesse ouvido, hoje não estaria nem aqui. So this was a trailer of this uh, film, uh, this sound piece is with images. Uh, I like it to see it this way, uh, maybe a bit like the first series of video I show you about this uh, wild track where the image is there to help us to listen better. And in this case, it was a bit the same thing. I mean, uh, I've been starting with the sound and then putting images, doing it. The, I mean, in most of the audiovisual project, we start with image and we put the sound on it. In this case, it's uh, making it the other way. So 
the image is there to help us to listen better or to make us listen. And so this became a, this sound piece has been like showing as a sound piece uh, or in, like in sound festivals, but uh, mostly in film festivals, uh, like a film or uh, even like uh, around 10 times at sound installation or video installation in different places, um, in different galleries and, and places like this. Uh, and it just uh, there is, was just an opening yesterday in Paris, where it's been shown as an installation too uh, for a few months. So um, and and yeah, and there is still this idea of uh, even if I'm still working with recording sound recording, of course, in this case, uh, there is this idea just to invite us to listen, not to find different ways to invite people to listen to. Um, so of course, for me, it's always important not only to do the project and to run away and never get um, feedback. The good thing is with uh, internet and WhatsApp, we are able to communicate. And so I went then back, I went three times to this place. Uh, the second time I went there just to make them, sh to show them the, the video, the film. So we've done like a small screening in the school of the, of the place at night. Uh, I came with a small uh, projector. And uh, then I I went there to do uh, other kind of recording and experiment. I've done one with uh, 360 cameras, with this idea that when you're listening in the forest, you can even if you are able to listen to see in the, all the direction, you're not able to see anything. You're mostly listening, and more mostly have this uh, acousmatic acus experience of listening a lot of sounds without being able to see the sources. So I've done a small experiment with this 360 camera. That you can uh, see on the, I mean, the, the film with the film itself can be uh, seen on Vimeo too or on my website. Uh, it's 35 minutes long, and then this small series of small experiment of 360 and on the YouTube channel too. And then with the sound without the story, I've done like a, a sound piece um, called Amazonia, uh, which is the result from different of those trips, uh, where you can just yeah listening to all those. Um, uh, songs from this specific village and uh, in a moment where we are talking a lot about uh, we were talking a lot about this, the Amazonian rainforest it was a bit the idea that um, your when we talk about the Amazonian rainforest we mostly think about the, the forest itself about the trees about uh, the nature and sometimes we forgot that a lot of people are living in the this Amazonian rainforest and uh, the idea was to make it listen to this forest through the inhabitants and not only uh, through the trees or through the birds or animals, uh, which of course are important, but uh, which are part of this uh, whole uh, nature, this whole uh, ecosystem. So, um, and that's something that is important for me in general, is just uh, generally when I go to a place, it's not only to record the place itself, but mostly the relation between the place and the people living there. Uh, which is, so I think, what uh, really interests uh, interest me. What was interesting in this kind of project, it, it, it wasn't a project at the beginning, so it wasn't, uh, I mean, I had the freedom to do uh, everything, uh, including doing nothing. And that's something that I really enjoy, which is not always possible, of course, but when it's possible just to go to a place and to see, well, something could happen or something maybe will not happen. Uh, I think this gives a lot of uh, freedom, which is very nice for creativity and to try just to yeah to be uh, as free as possible, as open as listening to the place and the people as much as possible and um, and to see what happens and some and maybe it's not nothing will happen. so maybe we just on the uh, nice relationship a nice meeting with the people and um, this could be uh, maybe enough. Um, so to to finish um, my presentation uh, of today, uh, we pick up with Mark uh, last project. We actually is uh, at the same place as the first video of Sonsel that I show you, north of Chile in the desert of Atacama. I was there um, a few years ago for a shooting. I was working as a sound engineer and I decided to record the sounds. I mean, desert in general are interesting because that's kind of very silent place. It's a, always a bit challenging to record sound in a silent place, but um, I like it. So in, in the, the first case, it was recording this uh, uh, can, uh, this empty can rolling into the, the desert of Atacama. And in this case, I was trying to record the sound of the walkie-talkies uh, from the crew because it was like I'm part of part of the 
of the soundscape, uh, not really of the desert, but from the the team of people who were there. To, we were there to make a recording for to make a, a shooting for a, a video art for uh, actually a, a British artist called Melanie Smith, a video artist. Uh, from uh, actually she is living in, in London and she she worked with video and so I was doing sound with for her and uh, I yeah, tried to record the sound of the walkie talkie with where pa and when I put two walkie talkie together something strange happens uh, in the microphone so uh, the day after I just tried to record a bit more of those walkie talkie and the strange songs they were uh, doing. So I will show uh, maybe an excerpt only of this uh, video done with the walkie-talkies in the desert of Atacama in Chile. a small excerpt of this uh, performance with walkie talkie on a shooting in, in, in the north of Chile. Then uh, as I was interested, I mean I don't I can't really explain uh, exactly how, how it works. Uh, but while what we're listening is the direct sound from the two microphones I was uh, using. So I decided to make us another shot in Brazil a few months later. And in this case I've been uh, using a few different uh, not only two but a few different uh, walkie-talkie uh, because another kind of walkie-talkie so sound was different In this case, I was using four different microphones. And then I decided to, uh, I mean, I was uh, doing a small residency in Finland in the Titanic Gallery. And I decided to go further in the same project. So uh, I tried to find a different uh, selection of walkie talkie and tried to make them uh, work all together. Then of course, the thing is they do different world songs if they move. So I found these kind of disco balls, which were just turning and try to use them. And so I decided to, I mean, I tried during, during a, a month I was there doing this uh, experiment with this uh, theory of uh, walkie talkie.
So this was uh, this walkie-talkie experience in Finland. Uh, at some point, I've been to see. I put a, a headphone outside, uh, so people would be able, if they would, could be curious to listen what I was doing. It was like uh, in a gallery, uh, so people were not able to to listen from outside. But if they would put like the headphones, they would be able. So uh, yeah, from from this uh, Atacama desert, from this north of Chile desert. Uh, I came to, to Finland to do this experiment. Uh, so this was all the project we decided to present today uh, from the list we've done with uh, Patrick, uh, with Mark, sorry. Um, and this idea of yeah of the wild track, of the remote from the sea uh, with this bamboo installation, the uh, Kurupira in the Amazonian rainforest and this uh, more performative uh, experiments with sound and walkie talkie. So uh, I think we still have a bit of time uh, to go into uh, some Q&A in case uh, there were some questions. Um, uh, so I've not been able to, to look at the chat during the, the talk, but maybe some people have some uh, specific question or, um, or you, if you want me to go maybe further in one or uh, another project, uh, or if you want even me to talk about another project I have not been talking today, it's possible to, of course. Thank you, Felix. Can everybody hear me okay? Can you hear me? Yeah, all good. Okay. What a fantastic collection of works. Thank you so much for sharing stuff to us. Um, so we'll use the chat to kind of put some questions from everybody. If anyone wants us to speak to Felix directly, down at the bottom of the screen, there's a reactions button with a little smiley face, which you can use just to raise your hand if you want to just ask a question rather than typing it. Um, uh, so there's a couple of things already here. I've got a whole bunch of things I'd love to ask you, but um, let's go, let's start. <laughs> Let, let's start off perhaps while maybe some other questions appear in the chat. Something I'm always interested about is why why sound what do you think what's happened to us what, what you, <laughs> is there a moment that drew you to this particular well i'm trying still trying to figure out why sound and then as i was thinking maybe it's why listening why why listen more than sound um i guess of course there's plenty of different uh, ways of explanation but one of them is uh, why when i was 18 years old i had to figure out something to study and I wanted to uh, to be in the musical world, actually uh, connected with musician, but not really being a musician. So I, that's how I start uh, uh, working and studying uh, sound. But at some point, I this I I find that working. I was mostly working on concert, and I find that I wasn't that much uh, into music or listening, but much more into cables and boxes and uh, working twenty four hours. Uh, just in trucks and behind the stage. So it wasn't exactly the idea of uh, music that I had. There wasn't so many. There was, I don't think there was any listening uh, part in, in the job, at, at, at least the way I was uh, doing it at this point. So I decided to go further and to try to record, I mean, to try to understand uh, and to learn uh, how to record sounds uh, first for film, but then it was yeah, more in general. And then I think it was, yeah, on the flow, just doing it and discovering that I was enjoying listening and enjoying uh, uh, recording sound and enjoying sharing them at some point. And that's all I get yeah, into sound, I think. Um, maybe it wasn't something planned since the beginning. Uh, and I really discover, I discovered that field, field recording was existing and that people would do some sound pieces when uh, myself, I was doing some recording. And at some point I said, well, I'm not the only one. To do this, and I, that oh, I discover this whole world of, and I'm still discovering a lot. I mean, even if everything is connected with sound or connected with listening, I'm still trying to do things that I've not done before, or trying to get surprised myself. Because of course, we have sound uh, everywhere. We have, we are always listening, or at least hearing sounds. So, um, yeah, there is so many ways of uh, working with sound that I try just to. Yeah, to to keep it uh, flowing and to to see what can happen and and yeah, I, I, who knows what uh, what else could happen? But uh, I like it just to to be working with sound as a material and to try to find different way of experience listening. 
Thank you very much. So let's go through the questions from from everybody. So here, first, you can, I'm sure you can see the, cat, the, the 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 chat there, but I don't think it hurts. Uh, yeah. Just read it out. So from Martin, I find it interesting how your in brackets filmed movement and physicality are present in many pieces. Has this always been the case, or has it developed over time naturally? Um, well, I guess just thinking about the movement myself, like a, when I become like a character or a performer, I guess, no? Um, well, uh, actually, the things that I've been showing today, I think uh, maybe the, the, the one uh, with uh, the walkie-talkie is the most uh, performative uh, piece that I've uh, ever done. Uh, and um, Actually, uh, I think it all starts with this uh, small video that the, this uh, friend uh, on the shooting in Chile say, well, let's try to film it. And then at some point, I think, at this point, I think the, um, uh, my character or my, myself uh, become a character. And, um, and this character is like a sound engineer. So it was the idea just to keep it simple in a way, just uh, not trying to do more, uh, I, I'm sure, I, I wish would be like a very bad actor. So I just tried to make uh, what I do, uh, just recording sound and try to keep it uh, in a way simple and uh, just doing uh, how it is and not trying to act uh, too much. And that I, I think that's all it gets. Then of course, um, the, the first one, it was like just, yeah, the camera would press rec and we would try and we'd see what uh, would happen. Uh, and then in the last 10 videos from the series, uh, uh, the ones that I've done in Switzerland, then it was more, yeah, uh, thinking where to put the camera, how to, put, to record, uh, what kind of microphone, what kind of shot. Uh, so it was, everything was much more plain and I was able to make a few uh, different takes. So um, uh, I don't know if it was uh, improved or uh, developed uh, over the time. Uh, it's not something that I've been, I mean, um, thinking too much about it. I think it just, yeah, came how it was and then that's all. It, it, it became, but then I'm not sure that it's a huge difference between the first video of the series and then the last one. Then of course, for the walkie talkies uh, experiment, then of course it was much more prepared, rehearsed. I mean, the, the one in Finland, it take me one month just to, to, to think and rehearse and do and redo. So uh, it's a totally different uh, uh, way of working. And of course, uh, watching to the videos to understand how it was, etc. So maybe this part has been improved over the, the, the years and from time to time. Thank you. Question from Declan. Uh, in Rumours of the Sea, how did you tune each individual flute to its desired note? Yeah, so in, actually in Rumours of the Sea, it was everything was kind of empiric. I mean, uh, I don't know if it exists in English, but this idea that I didn't knew that much about flutes. I don't need, I mean, about uh, bamboo flutes, I didn't know anything. I didn't know about uh, Thailand. And so I was just uh, trying to do things and oh, I've done it with uh, the buckets. It was all the time. I mean, during the whole project it has been a bit done that way. Of course, at some point, people uh, who knows a bit more about bamboos helps me, but about the tuning, I've just uh, received those uh, flutes and I asked them not to make any holes in it. So. Um, mostly because I wanted just the flute to have one specific tune. And then what I've done is just to take one and just to make it shorter and to put the tuner and to see uh, if it was, which note it was, and try to define on a pentatonic scale uh, all the, the notes that I could do. I think it was five different groups um, only, or maybe seven, but it was on a pentatonic scale and just basically uh, cutting them. And then I was able to, to define that this, uh, more or less this uh, length would make this this note, this tune. And then I was just taking a bit more out of the tune of the flute. And if I take, too, if I took too much then I would make it to the next note. So it was really uh, without any specific knowledge, just a, a tuner and just a, a saw to, to cut the, the bamboos. And then, at some point, I wanted to make uh, to to make it more with like a local uh, musician, but I've that's something I didn't I've not been able to find like a lo local uh, flute player, and so then it was to go to Bangkok, and then it was I mean it, even if it's the same country, it was kind of complicated to go 
until there and, and so I decided just to do it uh, yeah on my own and to try to tune them and then of course as the, the the power of the waves is always different if you go with a lot of power then it goes to an harmonic so it would um uh, it's not only only one note sometimes you have it's, it's the first harmonic sometimes you will have, even have the second harmonic so it wasn't uh, sounding exactly like a tune but uh, in a way i think it gave like a wall uh, sensation uh, about uh, about, the, um, about all the flutes all together thank you felix the next question is in your work you seem to often try to shift the focus towards sound or try to invite people to listen to their own environment the unknown or the unheard or to other parts of the world. Do you consider this the main purpose of your artistic explorations? Is it something that for you has a political meaning? Could it be perceived as a form of empowerment while facing global changes maybe? Yeah, thank you. That's a very good question. And of course, uh, I think, I mean, to, to define the main purpose of uh, different works, which are so different, it's always kind of challenging. But um, I think over the years, I definitely think that um, if there is only like one purpose, it's the idea to be able to listen and to listen to our environment, to listen to the others, to listen to the people and the nature all around us, or even to think that, is, that there is no uh, limit between the nature and the humans and that we are just part of the same thing and we are just uh, we have this possibility to listen to it and that's something that I really like and that's something that I think it may be um, one of the, 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 the common points from the different projects I showed today just this idea that uh, we could um, um, listen to our environment in a different way and then this idea of listening can go, can go further than just the sound actually I think when, we lis when you listen uh, you can listen to a space you can listen to somebody and when this, uh, when you really listen, of, uh, first it's not as sometimes we think yeah, it could be passive to listen and we just sit and listen and it's like a passive um, thing. And I really think it can become active when you're actively listening to something or actively listening to somebody. In a way, you're making him existing. You're giving him a voice. And um, I mean, in the um, in the nature, if an animal is not able to make uh, himself. Uh, to, to, to make himself listen to, uh, then he will disappear because he will not be able to communicate. And I, uh, maybe in, the, in our world too, if you're not able to, to, if nobody is listening to you, if nobody is taking care of you, if nobody is understanding you, maybe you, 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 you will face a big challenge to, to exist in this world. So I think it's really important to, to listen and not only to listen in this idea of sound, but in the idea of uh, listening uh, uh, yeah, in, in a general term. So I guess uh, that's, uh, of course, one of the main purpose of the works I've done. And actually for a piece for like Los Gritos de Mexico, the one I've done in Mexico City, I uh, I really love when people say, well, I always find this street so noisy and now I've been able to listen things to them as a, as a choral, as a specific song from, as a choral, as a, as a, as a symphony or as something different. So that's always challenging. And the important thing is not to listen to the sound piece or not to listen to the field recording, but to be able to listen to um, the daily soundscape uh, in another way, maybe. So um, yeah, I, 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 well, of course that's what I try to, but uh, maybe it's a, it, uh, an utopia, maybe something which won't be um, rich, uh, and, and or maybe the day it's uh, rich, the day people are able to listen to their uh, surroundings. Maybe they don't need any more uh, field recording and sound art to to do this and just uh, have to play, just enjoy the sounds from the place they are in. Thank you very much. There's lots of thanks in the chat. And we're yeah, all I see there's a lot of difference. Uh, then yeah. I think I had a few direct messages. So uh, I'm we're all sure. very. Happy. And now some really <laughs> questions coming. So maybe this next one is perhaps in this sort of how you might conceptualize or unpack like a nature culture kind of spectrum. So a question from Jay. Um, I'm interested to know if you've got any other works based around square quotes, scare quotes, unnatural sounds. 
um, how do you understand what do you understand nature to be and what do you understand culture to be if these things are yeah well i do have a few uh, other works uh, where i've been recording i mean for example i've been recording in california some pump jacks those pumps which are taking out gasoline uh, i've been recording some trains but then it was connected to the people there too so um actually it's uh yeah, I think it's it always. Uh, I'm interested in unnatural sounds, but uh, when it's connected to the people in general. I mean, maybe in this case, the walkie-talkie is a bit one exception, uh, because generally, I'm yeah, uh, I'm. I think I'm interested in this kind of dialogue between uh, nature and unnature, about uh, human and non-human, about uh, uh, different uh, uh, actors uh, in the same place. And uh, I like this idea that there is a dial dialogue, there is a conversation that a, a human in a place is acting or reacting depending on the sound he has around him. And, uh, and maybe even a machine or a human with a machine uh, with an unnatural sound uh, is uh, reacting too. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think I'm always, I mean, when I went there to this small village of the Kurupira, I really wanted, I was the idea, yeah, I will make a natural soundscape, I will make some natural recording. And at some point, uh, I wasn't able to, to do like natural uh, recordings, or uh, maybe to consider that uh, human is part of this nature and that uh, actually I'm interested in this relationship between uh, all of this. Uh, some people say like nature doesn't exist, and I think maybe that's something I, I like. At least the concept that everything is natural, so there is not not uh, a human in front, uh, uh, or there is not something unnatural in front of something natural. But then, of course, it's hard to make like general um, ideas about uh, diff a lot of different works on a lot of different situation that I've been uh, uh, going through, of course. Cool. Thank you very much. Great answer. Um, next, we've got 15, just, well, 13 minutes left. Um, so you hope you can deal with this bombardment. <laughs> in, the, yeah. in the early stages of your conception on your work, did the sound represent the voice of a group in the world or your own or both? Or from what angle do you think about it more? Yeah, uh, well, uh, no, I don't think that the sound is representing my own voice. Actually, I, I of course, I, uh, I think it's important to be there as a person and to accept. I mean, some people, some field recorder would talk about the act of recording as an act of composing. Uh, and I like the idea that when you are in a place, you are there. And even if you try to be as quiet as possible, you are part of this space and you're uh, changing the sound of the place. So I'm not trying to disappear. But I definitely think that I'm not listening to myself. I hope not to be listening to myself. And I like more the idea to be just um, maybe just a step between uh, or uh, uh, maybe yeah, just uh, something between a sound and some listeners, let's say. And uh, when I've done this first uh, sound sharing on free sound, it's what, like being this part, uh, making able people from one place to listen to play sounds from another place. And uh, so I, uh, that's why I share it on free sound because I'm actually sharing sounds that I'm not uh, the owner of the sound. I'm not the author. I mean, maybe I've done the recording, but I don't, not uh, don't. I'm not the author of the sound. So I'm just yeah, uh, in between. And maybe I'm even sharing something that I'm not uh, able to. Uh, I, that, I mean, when you share something that you're not the author in general, you talk about piracy. So maybe I'm a, a kind of pirate when I'm recording the sound of the, of the tree and sharing it with a lot of people uh, without uh, having maybe the permission of the tree. So I definitely don't think that I'm listening to myself. I hope not. But I'm trying to make people listen to different to other places. And I think that's maybe the power of listening is that uh, you're not uh, you, you're making people listen and people will have their own listening experience. Maybe much more than with video or with images. I mean, of course, it's possible with other mediums, but uh, um, uh, with uh, with sound, I think it was this possibility to make people, uh, yeah, to listen to to uh, their own way, to have their own uh, listening experience. I think that's something interesting. Um, 
from from sound in general. Eh? Then uh, I, I'm not sure if it was exactly the question, but it was about this idea of sharing uh, listening experience and sharing uh, hearing experience. That's right. Thank you. So there's a couple of questions which I'll fold together here about the walkie-talkies. Um, so fascinated of hearing more about the ways in which you manipulated the feedback loops. It made me think of more like electromagnetic interference between the radio, yeah. the, the radio frequencies and the electromagnetics of the microphone rather than it being acoustic feedback per se. Yeah. And the second question uh, related to it, the sound was particularly musical in the walkie-talkie piece compared to the others. Was that something that you intended to bring to the piece or was it impulsive and improvised as you recorded? Yeah, well, uh, so uh, about the feedback, yeah, actually when I start, uh, when I take the, the walkie-talkie and I wanted to make the first recording for this uh, shooting, I, I thought I would do some feedback, but actually what we are listening is it's not a feedback uh, because there is, there is no feedback. And what we're listening is uh, kind of electromagnetic uh, interferences uh, that I can't exactly explain, but uh, that is provoked uh, inside the microphone. So that's something, if you are there without the headphones, you will not be able to listen to anything. You have no, no feedback, nothing. It's just uh, electromagnetic sounds. And then it becomes musical. I think in most of my work, I've been uh, trying to make people to listen to the sound as it, if it would be music in a way, uh, or just to be in this musical listening but not necessarily to try to reproduce music. And uh, uh, when I work with the, the voices from the from the people in Mexico City, I don't try to to reproduce uh, music, but I try to people to make it list, listen to uh, as if it would be music. Then um, I, I I do have I didn't talk about it, but I do have like a musical uh, formation too. I was a percussionist when I was uh, young before my 18s. So I do have like uh, some basics about. Um, about music, I can read the score. And in the case of the walkie-talkie, maybe it becomes more musical. Maybe I, there is this comment because um, I've been able to, re to rehearse. I mean, in the first one, the one in the desert, it was basically just as it came. Eh? I, maybe I've done a few takes, but it was uh, as it comes. But then the ones in Finland, of course, I had a, a month to, to, to think about it and to see and to, to see each one of the walkie-talkie, how they would react, how they would uh, do. So there is there wasn't really like a score, but there was like yeah I can I could try to start with the beep and I could try to put this and I could try and then of course I've been trying a lot of different other things uh, to put different uh, to put other music to put uh, to make it longer shorter to see a rhythm so um, uh, it's uh, it's mostly improvised I mean it's totally improvised but of course I know what would work or not and what could uh, be uh, working so maybe that's why it become more uh, musical than the other because it was much more prepared in a way than all the other work which was just happening and where uh, in, I'm thinking the walkie-talkie there's the one where I'm by, by myself provoking really the sound you know in all the other I'm mostly recording the sounds uh, being there or maybe provoking but they are still from from the place where I am and in this case especially when I'm in a gallery in Finland I'm doing the song by myself. I'm provoking the songs. The songs are not there. Uh, and I come with this project there. So it's not even like a walkie-talkie that I found. I mean, of course, I buy a few there, but I, I came with the ID. So I think that maybe that's what, what makes uh, the difference and what make it may, more performative or make it may, maybe more musical than the others' uh, projects. I just thank you very much. I put in the chat as well in the kit room over the summer. We've just got this new interesting um, uh, ether mic from Soma Synth, which is an electromagnetic microphone. So for all students, book it out, explore the electromagnetism. Um, on the subject of different forms of microphones, the next question is about hydrophones in, in essence, but it expands, I think, to the idea of like the discursive and the idea of sort of community and the communities around sound. So what is your philosophy about the, about vocalizing and spreading information? I think having conversations and doing things like this perhaps, and what is your own favorite work by another practitioner? Uh, well, about uh, the, the idea of vocalizing and spreading information, uh, well, I try to share as much as possible. Uh, I mean, 
if it's about this. Uh, so I try to, I mean, uh, all my work are available so you can uh, see it, download it. Uh, most of my recording are in uh, CCO, so you can uh, use them and redo and doing uh, whatever you want with it. So I think it's super important to share. And even in this idea that I'm maybe not the author of the sound or of the things, I think it's very nice to, to share them. Um, so about the hydrophone, um, so I've done uh, yeah, a tutorial uh, that I've done uh, with my girlfriend actually a few year, months again ago. So um, it's not it's nothing invented by us. It's just trying to do things and trying to share them. And um, there are probably hundreds of ways of doing uh, an hydrophone. So uh, I've done it with this. We've done it with another like small uh, windscreen. But I think plenty of people are doing um, very nice stuff um, and very nice uh, proposal about uh, do-it-yourself uh, uh, things or about electromagnetic. You have uh, the LOM audio in Bratislava doing very nice uh, work too that I really recommend, uh, re recommend you. So uh, I think it's important to share, uh, of course, information and, and practice. And, um, and then my own favorite work by another practitioner, that's very complicated uh, because, um, of course, there was a lot of different uh, people important for me uh, that I've been, as I've said, discovering why I was doing. Um, but maybe, uh, I mean, as we, we are in the UK, uh, when I start discovering that field recording was something that uh, was uh, that exists, that some people would uh, buy a CD or listen to some sounds uh, only to listen to the sounds. So it was kind of very, very late. Eh? I, that's something that I discovered far after my studies as sound engineer. Uh, I discovered the work of Chris Watson. And um, I this first I was very surprised about this that this exists, and then of course I was a bit attached to his career as his, uh, he has this uh, sound engineer uh, part too, and then so from from the, from the work he has done I really like the the ghost train the train fantasma which has been done in Mexico where I've been doing a lot of recordings and that's a place what I really know, so um, but of course it's because I have to pick one. If, if I, I could, uh, I have much more other works that I really find interesting. Uh, and I think sound is, is present in a lot of different uh, ways of uh, creative ways, uh, not only sound art, but in a lot of different installation, video works, uh, performance, uh, radio. And I think that's make it something super interesting. Thank you, Felix. We'll try and squeeze in a couple more. Um, question from Roberto here. I'd like to ask you what your mindset is or if you have any suggestions on how to approach a new environment and new locals for an artistic project. For example, I'm interested in how did you get in touch with the locals in Brazil and Thailand? Yeah, well, uh, so the two projects were very different in, in this part because for Thailand, I was asked to think about a project by some people, some creator and people from the cultural ministry, so which were not connected to the place. And in the second case in Brazil, I was uh, really uh, going by on my own, just doing going there for, to make like this, um, this kind of holidays with my microphone. And that's something that I really like. Actually, I try not to do, I try to find, of course, a place where I could go, but to be as open as possible. And uh, I think that's super important uh, because if I would have, for example, for this uh, project in the Amazon rainforest, I would have known about the Kurupira before I went there. I would have known that I would wanted to make a film or a sound piece about it. I would have looked on books and internet or YouTube chain Based mostly done and written by uh, people from the north of the world, uh, which have access to uh, this, or we are anthropologue, and so I would always, I would already have an idea of what I'm looking for. And I think that's when you know what you're looking for, then maybe it's not you don't need to look it anymore. Uh, I like to go to a place to look for something. Probably I'm looking everybody uh, all the time. I'm looking for something, but it's good not to know what you're looking, what you're searching. Uh, because uh, once you know what you're searching, then you will already say, okay, I want this and I will try to go this to get this. So uh, for me, at least, of course, every project, every, every people will have his own way of work. 
But for me, it's super important just to be as open as possible and to have this possibility not to produce anything, just to be in the encounter with people and to be listening to the people. And when you go there with a the microphone, most of the people in the world, even if a small village in Amazonian rainforest, they know what is a microphone. And they know that the microphone is recepting uh, what you want to share with him in a way. Uh, it's uh, in this way, it's like maybe with a with a camera with a with a picture you have like a frame and you know what you are uh, focusing on a microphone is receiving almost everything which are uh, which is around him and uh, i think people uh, yeah just uh, i use it as a way a pretext to meet people and then people would share what they want about their listenings about their thoughts about what they want to share to the microphone and then of course at some point, I would say, well, I'm more interested in this because, of course, uh, I'm not trying to do something objective of a place uh, because I don't think it's possible. Uh, so I'm just trying to say, oh, yeah, I'm interested in this sound. I'm interested in this story. And so people uh, just trying to, to collect uh, all this. So I think, um, yeah, meeting people is good not to... Uh, to be as open as possible, to be trying to to see what they want to share, what they have to, uh, want to to do with you, what they want to to recall on the microphone, and yeah, to be um, as open as possible, and never try to to redo something which will never work. Actually, it's just uh, trying to to see what's new in the project and what's new in the in these specific meetings uh, in this specific place in this specific moment. So uh, yeah. Mm. Fantastic answer, Felix. And would you? Can we squeeze in one more? Would you mind? Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> just, to, just, to, I think a good concluding question. Um, so prompted by Zaren, could you go into more detail about the sound arts vocabulary? If I can frame it in the following way: Is what would, what are the positive and negatives of film sound compared to sound art? perhaps, and do you feel there's any useful distinction between the terms of practices of when you're being a sound artist compared to when you're being a sound designer or working in the domain of, of, of film, perhaps? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, I think it's always super complicated to put words about uh, something. Uh, uh, as uh, Mark was saying at the beginning, uh, I'm more interested in the voices than the word because uh, the words are never exactly what you try to say, what to try to define. So, um, uh, of course, it's applied with sound art and sound uh, engineering or sound recording. Um, so, uh, in Latin America, we use this uh, name called sonidista, which means basically somebody working with sound as a uh, as a painter is working with a painting and you can be a painter painting buildings, you can be a contemporary painter doing some uh, frames. And so I like the idea that uh, a sonidista, a soundist, or I don't know what would be like the translation in English, is working with sound as a material. And it's not so important if you, or, or maybe the, it's not the point to, to know if it's art or not, uh, if it's creative or not, it's just, I mean, uh, sound. And um, so as I have this formation of sound engineer, uh, when I start doing my own creative or personal work, um, suddenly I wasn't an, a sound engineer anymore, I was a sound artist. And then I said, well, uh, I'm doing this basically the same sound, but the same work, but sometimes I'm doing it from somebody else, then I'm a sound engineer because I like the technician just doing what somebody else would have in mind. And uh, when I'm doing by on my own, I become the sound artist because, uh, but actually I had the feeling that I was mainly, I mean, doing something kind of very similar uh, in, in both case. And um, I think that's this, this, this idea just to put uh, a, a barrier between what would be art and what is not art. But that's in general in life, what, what is art, what is not. Uh, we have plenty of example of uh, things uh, uh, where you could say it's not or it is. And I think um, as, uh, for example, thinking about listening, that's uh, about music to what is music, what is not. And maybe it's not about the sound itself, but maybe the way we are listening to it. I mean, if your neighbors is listening to uh, metal music and you hate metal music, it's just uh, super bad noise for you. And the neighbors is totally uh, convinced that it is music. So I, I really, like the idea that if it's sound art or sound engineering or sound recording or uh, what else, it just depends on the ways you're listening to it. 
And uh, that's why I like free sound too, because on free sound, you have some people just downloading sound for, for commercial or for video where you can hardly say that it, that it would be art. But somebody else would be just takes the sound and just listening to the wow, that's a beautiful piece and just uh, so I like the idea that it's mostly the act of listening that define what it is and what kind of uh, 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 yeah thing it is if it's art if it's engineering if it's recording uh, and maybe at some point if you go further that, that listening is already art or maybe that uh, a listener can become uh, the artist and that. Everybody as a listener can uh, make uh, that uh, suddenly the silence of the room can become art. Uh, maybe in this idea of uh, John Cage to, uh, to, to listen to the sound uh, uh, as, as music or as, uh, as sound art. Felix, thank you so much for everything. Um, you've given us a lot to think about. Um, hope to uh, next time you're in London, do come and pop in and see us all. Um, thank you for everything. Rory, thank you and Be and Eka for running the technical side of things. Thank you to Mark for organizing this and thanks to everybody else for participating. And I hope to see you all same time uh, next week um, in Sound Arts. Um, Thursday afternoons. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely evening. Thanks again, Felix. So the next Very time. Much for the invitation. Thank you.